I run a machine learning community where I teach machine learning engineering. And last week, uh, one student asked me about hourly rates. He has this company. It's an opportunity for him to work with this company as a freelancer, as a contractor. And he wanted to know my advice about how much money he should be able to charge this company. So basically, what is the market right now for machine learning engineers and data scientists? So uh, I decided to record this quick video to give you an idea of my experience working number one in the United States, number two as a freelancer, as, as a contractor, so not as a full-time employee, and sort of like give you some guidelines of how much you should expect to be able to charge, how much are companies willing to pay. Now, obviously, uh, anytime you talk about rates, about how much money you make. There are many, many different factors that come into this. Like number one is how your communication style, how good are you communicating? How good are you marketing yourself? Like how good of a negotiator you are? How good of a negotiator is the company you're talking to? So there are many, many multiple factors. Your case is gonna be different. Your situation is gonna be different uh, to mine. Also experience, obviously. Like uh, how much uh, specialized you are into something. All of those are variables that are going to define how much money you can ask for uh, a job. But uh, what I've seen, again, in the freelance market, United States, is that I, I like to, just to simplify it for you, I like to divide it into two groups or, or uh, let's call them two sections. The first one is a company looking for some long-term help. So let's say they're looking for a contractor to join their team as a full-time, almost employee without any benefits, right? So it's gonna be a contractor, a freelancer. He or she will, be, will get paid hourly, but the company has, uh, let's say, between 20 to 40 hours per week of work for that person. So in this situation, you should expect to be working almost full-time. So again, between 20 to 40 hours per week. And, and in these cases, you should be looking at a range between $100 per hour to $200 per hour. Now, obviously, uh, if you're just starting out, you probably wanna want to go a little bit lower than the $100 per hour mark, but somebody with a decent amount of experience should expect to be anywhere between $100 and $200 per hour. There are two main conditions that push this price down. And number one, the company is giving you a lot of time to work. So they are ensuring a lot of work for you. Therefore, you're gonna have to sort of like uh, give them a discount on your hourly rate. That's why this will command a lower uh, hourly rate. Number two, when you're doing this type of work, this type of hands-on uh, joining a team type of work, the competition will be larger. So you're gonna be competing with many, many people that are willing to do this job. Therefore, hourly rates will be a little bit lower. So the second category is for, a, a, imagine a company that is looking for help, but it's not full-time help. So it's, they basically want some, let's say advisors, they want uh, a couple hours every week, maybe 10 hours a month. You are advising a startup, you're helping a startup hire a team, you're providing risk assessments, you are providing architectural decisions. This type of high level, uh, not necessarily hands-on work is going to command a, a very high hourly rate compared to the first group. So what I've seen here is anywhere between $200 per hour up to $300 per hour is very common. Obviously, there are exceptions to this rule. Uh, there are people who make uh, way more money. They have a lot of credibility. They worked for a big company before. Uh, they're very public. So those people will be the exception. But normally what you're gonna see are people, for example, making $250 per hour or charging $250 per hour. Now, obviously they're not getting full-time work. So it's very hard to find a company willing to pay an individual that much per hour when they are sending 40 hours every week to that person. So that's, that's usually uh, very uncommon. You're not gonna see that. Now, here your experience plays a big role. Obviously to stay at this level, you need to have a lot of experience. You need to be, be able to market yourself. Your communication style will be pristine. 
So it's going to be a little bit harder to get here. There is much less competition in this area here. With those two in mind, I have just a few more things to tell you. So it helps you think about this. Number one, while I was, uh, uh, I posted about this uh, yesterday on X and somebody replied back to me with a formula that I think is useful to start thinking about this. So the formula was take your full-time employment uh, salary, assuming that you work as a full-time employee, divided by 2000, because 2000 is usually roughly the number of hours that we, we work for a company every year, and then multiply that by three. So let's say you make $100,000, you divide that by 2000 and multiply it by three, that will net you about $150 per hour. That is a good sort of like framework to think about where you should start charging. Now, this formula doesn't talk about the market, and that is a big factor. Like how much is the market willing to pay for that job? What this formula accounts for is uh, you need to start thinking about expenses that you will have if you become a freelancer that you did not have as a full-time employee, that you're probably gonna have to pay a little bit of extra taxes. You're gonna have to take care of uh, health insurance. You're gonna have to take care of your equipment um, and things like that. I run a couple of scenarios uh, through my mind using this formula. It usually pushes for the higher end of the hourly rate. Like somebody, it's very simple to find somebody making 200K here in the United States working as a machine learning engineer. Like that is not uncommon. So $200,000 will take you all the way to $300 an hour if you follow this formula which again is very high in that scale. Just keep this in mind, use that formula as a baseline. It will help you start thinking about this and then check out the market. The second thing that I have to mention is don't let advice like this to put you in a bad situation. I know a lot of people that, for example, they lost their job. I don't want you to start thinking about these ranges if you don't have a job, if you don't have how to provide. Do what you have to do in order to make money. And then once you have a salary coming in, once money stops being a problem for you, at that point, you can start thinking of negotiating from a position of strength, right? When you don't have a job, that's the worst time for you to be trying to negotiate a higher hourly rate because it's, you're not going to be negotiating from a position of strength. So do whatever you have to do. Don't worry about these scales and ranges and whatnot. This is just informational for you, just so you understand what you can actually get out in the market. And the final thing that I want to mention is that it's very important for you to niche down. When you're thinking about hourly rates, if you are a data scientist and that is how you market yourself, you are gonna have a hard time differentiating yourself from every other data scientist that's competing with you. So the less specialized you are, maybe the more opportunities will come your way, but the more you're gonna have to compete to get those opportunities, the lower the hourly rate is going to be. Like if you go to an online marketplace like Upwork right now and you search, you will see data scientists charging 50, $75 an hour, right? So around that range, assuming they are from the United States, it's really hard for them to go uh, above that and still get jobs. If you are a person who specializes and who markets themselves at something very specific, you will be able to command a higher hourly rate and companies are gonna be willing to pay you for that. So if you are the time series analyst specialized in product forecasting using AWS SageMaker, you know, it's a mouthful, but it's very, very narrow, very, very specific. Now you can get away by charging way more money. And whoever is looking for that type of job, it's going to be willing to pay a premium because they will consider or they will see you as a very, uh, as a specialist, as somebody that knows what they're doing. That would be my advice. Again, think as 100 to that $200 an hour. If you have decent experience, if you're starting as a freelancer, that's probably where you need to be. If you go lower, you're probably under marketing yourself. If you want to go specialized, if you want to do uh, willing to be taking smaller jobs, if you're willing to, to take a fewer hours per week, then 200 to 300 an hour is probably where you're gonna be moving. Hopefully this was helpful. 
and I'll see you in the next one.